हेमा जी गोहे संस्कृत संस्कृति अस्ति संस्कृत संस्कृति in order to understand your vidyati we have to explain sanskriti so there is tin stayam tin and all will come so there also you have to come back to samyak krita ha iti sanskriti like that you have to come so my preference is could it, could it be because it is saha eva so it is referring to that person sanskrita ha right so emaji is asking what is the vidyati of sanskrita and uh, there also samyak krtaha since it and is saha i was thinking since it is saha it could be because of that pulling a krtaha only will match no sanskriti is stri linga right yeah but she converted stri linga to pulling by saying sanskriti hi yasya asti i Sorry. i can made it like a bahuvri hi right so i hope you got know, hema ji yeah so uh, yeah so that is both the, the, the bottom line is what sanskritam the language is also called sanskritam and here also the person is also called sanskrita the way to understand them are different because one refers to language one refers to a person language it is sanskritam because the language is so so beautifully defined all this vipatti and all can do with for every word in sanskrit unlike in english in english you can do to some words but not to all words and there are so many other features because of which we call it sanskritam here sanskrita ha of course one who is a viveki sapratya who is dan mithyatva nischaya ha who understands mithyatva well that person is that sanskrita ha but uh, that sanskritam na uh, ye yeah, the nakumsakalingam la irukku nakumsakalingam dana adu sanskritam appadina sanskrita Sanskrita Bhasha, it is feminine. So why Sanskrita and all the Sanskrita? We have to ask Panini that question. I don't know why it's called Sanskrita. <laughs> okay, Harbasa ji, go ahead. Um, hold on. Not even Panini. No, we can't. We should. We we part. Sanskrita was there even before Panini. So. Panini might have an explanation, but we have to see. That's how it was called, I think. All right, um, Hara Prasad Ji. Yeah, Mohaliya, uh, you said Pratyagatma equals Atma equals being inside. That is the word you used. Yeah. So, what is the meaning of the word Pratyag? Yeah. So, Pratyagatma is a word. pratyag means inside atma is atma okay pratyag means inside atma is atma and so pratyag atma means what he explained it before pratyag cha asau atma is pratyag atma means what asau asau means this yesha this is atma and that atma is also pratyag inside it is inside inside and atma and therefore called pratyaga that is a literal meaning of the word pratyaga okay the word it, it is composed of two words called pratyek and atma okay. and that is a way to explain so pratyek atma is a samasa correct correct it's a samasa because it has two words pratyek and atma correct okay, okay. samasa it's called karma dharaya samasa like that there is a word ओके, 
Okay, Veda is also called Thirumarai in Tamil. Oh, it's called Thirumarai, is it, in Tamil? Thirumarai. Thirumarai. Ah. Thirumarai. Yes, the true meaning is concealed. Oh, Marai. So that Marai is referring to concealment. I see. So that which reveals that which is concealed is called Thirumarai. Oh, that which reveals the concealed thing is Veda. Right. Okay. I see. Thirumarai. I need to note this down. I never heard this. He said that because that Marai came in that uh, Mahamara thing. Mm. So I mm. just thought I remember that and I put it. Thiru Marai. Okay, interesting. Very interesting. I am going to look into this. Thiru Marai. Thiru Marai. Thiru Marai is different. different. Thiru Marai. All right. Next. I had a question. Yeah. The fourth uh, thing when you explained about Jivatma, you mm. said that Jnani he overcomes this feeling of existence also. How is it possible that... Okay, repeat that again. You said something with respect to existence, uh, so it doesn't apply to... It is somewhat okay, but then the third one is more applicable to Jivatma, you said. Uh, among yeah, the yeah. Religions. Right, right. So, for the fourth meaning which means Sarvada Asti, always existing, always existent, can be applied to Jiva because Jiva also continues the journey constantly. But Jivatvam comes to an end. With Atma Vidya, Jivatvam comes to an end. So from that perspective, Jivatvam is not always existent. Fourth meaning does not apply. That's what I said. Okay. I thought the existence was explained with respect to Atma, which is always there. So, which we see because I am there, so everything else also I see the existence. Yeah. So, Atma is always there, but as Jiva, is Atma always there is the question. Hmm. Okay. Okay. As Parameshwara, Atma is always there. As Paramatma, Atma is always there. But as Jiva, as Jiva is Atma always there. That is the question we ask. Yeah, is it possible? But once it possible? he recognizes the Jivatvam, then I thought only existence is more obvious than anything else. There is I no thought... longer there is no longer an independent an entity called Jiva. After Atma Vidya. So separation. There is no longer an entity called Jiva. Right now there is an entity called Jiva. right? A limited entity called Jiva. Which has karma associated with it. Which has a body associated with it. For some time it won't have a body associated with it. And again another body associated. So this continues. That is a Jiva. Correct? So, the Jeevatma won't be there. After Atma Vidya, after Prarabdha Karma is exhausted, then what happens? Then there is no more Sukshma Shariram, Karana Shariram. Everything is gone. Everything is gone. Jnana Gnidagdha Karmanam Tamahu Andi Tambudha And existence That's itself what? is borrowed from Paramatma, right? Jivatma doesn't have existence. It's borrowed from Paramatma, right? Since it is Paramatma's, I thought since it is Paramatma's, if you can call attribute, I thought that will remain. No, Atma remains. We are not saying Atma does not remain. But Jivatvam is gone. Jiva does not remain. Jiva doesn't work. Jiva does not remain. What is gone? But clay will remain. Search for pot as much as you want after the pot breaks, but pot will not be available. But clay remains. 
That's what I'm saying. Jiva is gone. Nama Rupa is gone. Nama Rupa is gone. Correct. Then again, cognitively, right? Because the parent knows it is an elephant, but then they are more clear about it is sandalwood. So, when the jiva is alive, yeah. you said is right. But what about after death? So, it is only G, okay. After I death, thought, what I thought the association is only when you are alive, right? That's how you take birth. So, what is your final point? So I I was a little confused when you said that Jnani, um, he's, uh, the Jivatma, he is able to clearly, I don't know, I didn't understand what you said. <laughs> I thought existence is there. So that is what is there in everything which is Atma. So that correct. Correct. For correct. That is correct. But as Jiva, existence is not there. Jiva does not exist. That's what I said. Yeah. It's always there. Atma is always there. But there is no entity called Jiva. After, after Jnanam. From that perspective, we say uh, three definitely applies. Four, because four can apply to Jiva. Because Jiva also exists, always exists. But if somebody were to question you, Jiva does not always exist, then you must be prepared for that answer. You must be prepared to say, yeah, okay, Jiva Tvam is gone. It, ha it has no beginning, but it has end. Jiva Tvam is Anadi, but it is Antam, Santam. It has Antam. So you can take it both ways, depending on who you look at. Hmm? Naditvat Padasti Antatvat Santatvat Sarvada Nast Jnane and Santatvat Sarvada Nast. Yeah. Uh, in Tamil, there is a proverb, Nayakanda Kallakano, Kallakanda Nayakano. That is, if you look at uh, the doll made of uh, stone, it appears as uh, a stone. But if you want to see it as a dog, it appears as a dog. Kallakanda Nayakano, Nayakanda Kallakano. Uh, oh, it is uh, a wrong statement. But that, that is also... Interpreted as actually, when the dog is near to nearby, you are not able to find the stone. But when you find the stone, by the time you find the stone, the uh, dog has run away. Uh, uh, but that is, that that is a external Sorry. meaning. But intrinsic meaning is when you see a dog made of stone, uh, it uh, appears as a dog if you see as a dog. But if you see it as a stone, it appears as a stone only. No, no, no. It is. It is not like that. Let me clarify. It is a wrong statement, a wrong uh, thing. It is Nayaganai Kandal Kale Kanade. Nayaganai Kandal, not Nayay Kandal. So, what is the meaning of that, Ramaji? Nayaganai Kandal. Lord. If you see the Lord, you don't see the stone. Okay. Okay. If you see and the Lord, you don't see the stone. Uh, this thing. That is why Nayagan, it is not Nay. So okay. it is Marival of the word. No, I prefer that. I prefer that Nayagan because then it makes sense. That is a real thing. Because... It's a wrong usage they have started by thing. Nayagan, it is Nayaganai Kandal. It okay. By constant saying it has become, it has, uh, what do you call, uh, eluded. Very good, very good. So, Venkat Ramanji, is there a possibility it could have been Nayagan and not Nai? That is the question we Nayagana, have. Uh, uh, it got uh, converted. Jai Kumar Ji. Hey, one, Jai minute, one, minute, one, minute, one minute, one minute, please. Venkat Ramanji, go ahead. Uh, no, it is uh, normally told Nayakanda Kallakana Kallakanda Nayakana. Okay, uh, so I understood. No, I heard that. I heard that also. And I used to think, therefore, like what Hemaji said, that you want to, it's a colloquial thing. I want to 
do something i want to chase the dog away i can't find the stone but i will oh, find the dog stone that is how i understood it but uh, you are saying no it is like the my 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 this one is, uh, told in the sense if you see go to the temple and see the idol and the see the idol as god it appears as god but you want to see it as a, as a stone you will see only the stone at in the temple that is how it, in that context the people say if you say in the a temple you see it as a stone it is a stone only but if you so think that, it as a god it is a god so then i can apply much better than now again it seems much better to me because you now said uh, bhagwan is nayak bhagwan is nayak so i think so i think this is very good this is very good i will ask my father also and see if he has anything interesting i'll ask yeah, i'll ask correct nayagan only not nay can you talk to her i am going to use this on some of our friends here and they talk throw this question at them and see what they say <laughs> good nice point i'm going to make a note actually venkat raman ji is saying naaye kandal kallai kaanam kallai kandal naaye kaanam is the reference in the contextual meaning is opportunities when you get one thing you don't have the other that may and when you have the other you don't have this one so in that sense it is correct okay okay good good uh-huh. The opportunity missed because of that. Hmm? Yes, yes. In Kannada, we say, Guruji, Hallidra Kadla illa Kadla idra Hallidra Arprasad Mahodya must be knowing. One thing about our Indian thing is, in one language, if something is there, if right or wrong, the mistake will be copied. Like, you know, we are good at copying and pasting. So this mistake also will get copied. Alli no naya gane hir beko. నమస్తే ఐఎమ్ నాట్ ఏబుల్ టు స్విచ్ ఆన్ మై వీడియో ఐ యూ ఏబుల్ టు హియర్ మీ టుడే ఎస్ okay so the fourth uh, meaning of uh, atma atati uh, there is no uh, reference here in the bashyam right i saw the three yachapnoti mm. yad uh, yadadatte yachati vishaya mm. iha so the atati is not there right right so the the, the ati dhatu is not mentioned and so shankaracharya at this ah, mantra okay. says sam tantatah bhava okay okay permanent existent existence okay. the nature of permanent existence santatah bhava ha and okay uh, so we have to search for the root so where did you get the santatah bhava from and that comes from adha and uh, and we have to look at the santata the vipatti of santata we have time i'll make a note to see what it comes santata ha dhanyavada you are right so you are right your observation is correct dhanyavada means constant companion sandha chari this is always mm. correct nitya brahma chari mm. nityam సహచారి yeah before he began the text even with the same um shloka i see very interesting yeah because he gave importance to the title let's understand the word atma yeah which... At- atma and then bodha also he went quite far i see very nice yeah 
in your recent uh, retreat what's that in your recent retreat sorry in your recent retreat oh yeah 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 that's right <laughs> prasad ji go ahead <clears throat> yeah so namaste jay kumar ji so the question is on uh, this uh, rope and snake example uh, the exist the existence depends upon uh, the object of knowledge right uh, so in, if i take sat and chit the sat of my thought is the chit so basically the existence depends upon uh, the object of knowledge so then if i take uh, the rope and snake i don't know snake i never saw snake and uh, i never dreamt snake also so where is that i see snake now so your question is if you never saw snake in your life before yeah you cannot project snake on the rope that's what you say that's why i related like existence has to depend upon the object of knowledge without uh, any object a knowledge of the object uh, it doesn't come into existence so here the snake i don't have the knowledge of the snake yeah that's okay in laukika that's how it works i mean extending to uh, so i'm trying to this this is an example which vedanta talks about but obviously it is related to the uh, the consciousness finally so realizing the uh, the consciousness okay so your point is taken that is if you never saw a snake you can never project a snake on the rope okay that's yeah. understood and beyond that where are you going so i'm going like uh, uh, similarly uh when i wanted i mean realizing uh, consciousness or uh, the ultimate the reality absolute reality uh that's where i'm going so now we're talking about body so is it something all uh, the the uh, uh the past uh, uh what do you say uh, the past experiences are uh, uh, samskaras uh, which which actually makes uh real uh, in other words uh, you know, if i take the snake itself uh, in order for the uh, example to be true it would be my samskaras which make me see that rope uh, as snake uh, yeah that like exactly that is called samskar it is due to samskar yes vasanas let's put it vasana samskar either way okay samskar means that the, the, the memory of the snake yeah the trauma that is got by the snake everything it becomes just etched in the mind that becomes a vasana yes that is true what you're saying is true so in other words superimposition of my atma uh, from the body mind it's happening so that's why the example is used uh, if why is that it should happen uh, the superimposition of that yeah so in the commentary to brahma sutra chakracharya mentions this he said there is a mutual superimposition i am superimpose anatma on the atma by saying that i am mortal really what i have done is i is atma but the body is mortal that's a fact and so i superimpose the attribute of the body which is anatma on myself atma that is one type of superimposition the other type is i superimpose atma on the anatma also so one attribute of atma i mean is sat sat is existence only atma has existence nothing else has existence really speaking the existence is atma and so whenever i say a pot exists etc pot is there if i say i am actually projecting atma on anatma okay so he says really speaking atma and anatma are opposites of each other how can you project atma on anatma and anatma on atma vice versa how can you how can this happen he says you are not projecting sorry he says it is not possible to take atma as anatma 
and it is not possible to take anatma why because viruddha swabhava you go because they are they're completely opposite to each other like day and night tamas prakash but like that he gives an example nobody mistakes day as night and night as day are you able to hear the bhajan and all you're not able to hear the bhajan okay good so there is a this gurugola going on here yeah so he says he despite this being a fact despite what being a fact despite the fact that it is impossible to take atma as anatma and anatma as atma still if i am doing it it means there is something called adhyasa he introduces the word adhyasa saying projection projection is possible and projection can be the only reason for this he says he introduces it yes okay yeah there's a projection projection is possible he says because why projection is possible because it's possible we have we have demonstrated it is possible we we have made the impossible possible prasad we should do we should do like this are baap re are you are you are great you know what god can't do you have done like that you have to do it it is impossible possible okay any other anything uh, else this this other I have other question so the um in the in the three lakshanas of uh, brahman uh, sat chit ananda the ananda is always little bit uh, uh hazy um so it actually uh, sort of represents a uh, sort of uh, value meaning purpose of uh, life right uh, i mean ananda itself i don't take it as bliss as such uh, even though we so uh what i'm saying so bliss i don't like to take it as a bliss english word to ananda so uh so it is sort of uh, one side it is called uh, uh, ananta uh, because we when you take sachit ananda uh but uh, i mean like to understand more of uh, ananda from the perspective of brahman rather than uh, the ananda which happens because of other things like in the uh, uh, uh in the vyavaharika uh, world and other things but uh, I, i understand it as something like value meaning purpose so secular versus uh, sacred uh, so that is that correct or uh, the value meaning purpose does it represent uh... okay i didn't follow your last question what is that yeah so i mean ananda uh, uh, the the lakshana uh, which in indirectly it is sort of understanding like it is the value meaning purposefulness uh which because it results into the ananda right so that's why i'm talking in the in the vyavaharika world uh, uh it's all about value meaning purpose in life uh. i mean a person who doesn't have a purpose in life also has ananda experiences of happiness so ananda can be gross ananda or it can be certain things can give up both are possible therefore there is no need to connect ananda to values no need to connect even though it, its connection is there but that is not the only way even a thief gets ananda oh today i got so much never before i got this much that's ananda <laughs> so yeah that is that's the way i look at but ananda is connected to ananta that's so, even more important for us to understand yeah okay kala vishaya uh, vastu kala and uh, uh, desha so that way it is right the three aspects so in a moment of experiential happiness joy an experience of joy right what happens what happens 
the division between bhokta and bhogya vishaya is gone disappeared completely that division is disappeared that is that experience is called ananda manifest as ananda and therefore when the dis when the boundary is gone that means there literally no boundaries at all means what it is ananta it is undivided whole that person as though experiences the whole the person is the whole not even experiences the whole that person is the whole and that is ananda that ananda is manifest and then i wrongly attribute that that manifest that now experience ananda is caused by this particular contact between me and the bhogya was that is why ananda is connected to ananta okay so that i think is more important for us to understand as vedanta students so we'll get another chance to unfold that okay. thank you yeah so there is a question here uh, a message mahesh ji is asking rudah and vyutpatti are are they literal and figurative mean that is the question so look at the question rudah rudiyatta is literal vyutpatti is figurative or other way around rudah is figurative symbolic vyutpatti is literal i i don't know what he means but he is using these two right how would you answer this question how would you answer this question one is a literally literal meaning the other is symbolic meaning figurative that's what he's asking how would you answer this rudaha will be literal right because you said khagaha hmm. rudaha is literal and vyutpatti will become symbolic figurative no. really no 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 so how do you answer this question how do you answer this question the uh, the answer to his question is not appropriate also means literal and figurative rudi itself can be literal and figurative also like the example kaga is bird is literal meaning of kaga is bird literal means what comes to you immediately that is called literal vachyartha sometimes but figurative here is lakshyartha is say lakshyartha means okay you are saying did you xerox it did you xerox it means what xerox is a name of a company which but it manufactured these xerox photocopy machines and now when oh you mean photocopy kya to so don't take it literally don't take the word xerox to mean to the company and, and then go look that way no no don't don't look that far just xerox means photocopy did you copy it or what azal is asking so that is figurative usage not literal use i don't know so literal and figurative is a bit vague here right vyutpatti is neither of those two vyutpatti means ena idu purva nadakkira parinjikka na ha right nalla irukku paaka so they are going on a, because janmashtami is coming so they are singing bhajans and then traveling with krishna you know in the pallak etc they are doing that so vyutpatti means etymologically whatever the etymology whatever the language tells what the language tell versus what people say what to the language tells versus what people say can we say it like that rudi means what people say literal versus figurative i have a problem with the sense rudi can be literal it can be figurative also i lakshyartha sometimes vyutpatti can be the lakshyartha suppose i call the 
airplane as a khaga. Is that literal or is it figurative? You see what I'm saying? It's it, it's neither lit it's neither it's neither literal nor figurative. I think there is something else that is missing in this list. <laughs> That's what I feel. Or is it both? Or is it both? It's literal. How can it be both? Figurative. See, calling the plane as Kaga, is it figurative? It's not figurative. I'm talking about an object there that's flying and I'm calling it Kaga because the word Kaga, if I look at the derivation of the word Kaga, it means a flying object. That's it. And a, and a UFO can also be called a Kaga. Unidentified flying object, right? UFO. Kaga. Adrishya Kaga or something, we have to say. Anything that so it is because we think Kaga is only a bird, we, this doesn't look real for us. Whereas in... No, doesn't look real means what doesn't look real? Tell me what doesn't look real. No, no, because our mind is uh, uh, stuck with the idea that Kaga means bird. Because the more... Okay. Uh, Okay. So, when somebody says an airplane is a khaga, we refuse to accept it. So, you're saying that can be called figurative? That is not in Rudy, maybe. That is Vipati. It is Arudi, all right, understood. But is it Vipati or not? That is the question. It, it, uh, the, uh, it is Vipati between... also. But it, is it figurative? That is, I'm trying to map the English word figurative to Vipati. It doesn't, is, it, it will not match. It won't match, I think. <clears throat> because I just checked the dictionary <clears throat> and it says figuratively and literal, it's, it depends on what is the context. Okay. Because otherwise, you know, it can go in both ways. Distinction within some fields of language analysis in particular, re uh, rhetoric and semantics. Yeah. I think it really doesn't mean the Bhutvati and um, Rudy. Yeah. So in a way, uh, Mahesh, Mahesh is not here, I think he's, he's not there. But um, this question is good. It makes us think. The you know English to Sanskrit mappings, right? It's making us think. Yeah. See, fig figurative is different. Lakshya, just now we saw. We saw. See, look at this. What did we see? Uh, avritta Chakshuhu, Avrittam, Vyavrittam, Chakshuhu, Shrotra Dikam. He's saying Chakshuhu means literally it means eyes. But don't stop with that. You have to just go beyond eyes and then Shrotra Dikam. And then further, to make it clear, Indriya Jatam, the entire group of sense organs. So there, what is it? That Chakshuhu taking it as eyes is called Vachyarthaha in Sanskrit. Literal meaning. Group but then, group becomes figurative, I think. In English, you can call it laks Lakshartha in Sanskrit. Is Lakshartha called figurative? I think it figuratively Chakshu can mean all, all sense organs. Is it called figurative or what? I don't know. It uses both. Implied, right? Some, somehow it uses both. What you are saying. It's uh. a little. And so it's the, really the context that you have to take. Okay. okay. So actually, Avrutta Chakshu, looking inwards means 
is it physically possible because even like uh, hearing in words mind at least we can say we can therefore therefore you are differentiating two things literal meaning versus figurative meaning if you take it literally it is meaningless there's no way i can turn my eyes inward that is not possible that's why the eyes cannot see itself okay uh, inward is not possible therefore it has to mean something else and that something else is called a figurative meaning lakshyartha so literal figurative vachyartha lakshyartha implied okay. cannot be implied so maybe i can maybe i can accept figurative as a translation for lakshya symbolic maybe you can say Maybe. Are you saying that implied is equal to uh, figurative? Okay, correct. Implied, figurative, symbolic are all in the same category. I'm putting all in the same category. Implied meaning, right? But we will get into problems when we talk about Satchidananda Atma and all. So, we will stick with uh, Sanskrit words. And my suggestion is that don't go if you think it is figurative think it is figurative but <laughs> I, yeah I mean, there, there is no such word exactly the lakshat and vachartha uh, and these two doesn't because match lakshya, because lakshya is a very important lakshya means hey what is there in your mind you tell me that are you referring to eyes only no no i want to refer to the entire all sense organs okay that becomes a lakshya then you could have said that all senses why did you say eyes no i i means everything you know i am going to i am going to bali for a vacation means what means what any beach <laughs> any beach for us because bali is sand no no i'm going to bali means what who can guess what i'm saying i'm going on a vacation and seeing everything okay. i it is nice the word i the word i refers to what my body <laughs> i am going to bali means my entire family is going to bali okay i am not going to bali there are so many people clamoring for attention here where is the question of i going to bali <laughs> in fact i am going to bali because everybody else wants to go to bali they are carrying me i am not carrying them <laughs> therefore i there refers to what not this individual i it refers to the entire family that is how we the, 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 the speaker should the listener should understand like That's but then you would say we are going to Bali, right? Because it doesn't work everywhere, Jai Kumar Ji. Because I so, do go alone. No, no, that's yeah. fine. That's okay. It, it can. It need not mean all the time. I don't mean it. It's based on context, obviously. But somebody said, "Are you there on next week for this meeting?" No, I'm going to Bali. Okay, In that meeting I'm required. I'm. I'm not there. That's all. but somebody else listening to this conversation says oh you're going to bali etc then yeah you mean the entire family is going to bali that's the meaning anyway jay kumar ji how about the sentence i am broke so it means it is not i am broken into pieces it is a figurative speech Yeah. for that in financially or the some other way i am disturbed correct so figurative meaning figurative word is equal to implied symbolic is equal to lakshyartha ha so maybe we can reconcile we can say okay it looks like we can say figurative is equal to lakshyartha ha but 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 vipatti and rudi i don't know i am still not convinced of that vipatti and rudi are different context altogether and uh, lakshyartha can come from rudi it can come from vipatti or it can come from growth both uh, and not translatable uh, exactly exactly 
but we did translate, right? Rudi is commonly understood with Pati's etymological meaning. We did use those two English words. And etymology, I'm okay with. Because it's... Um, we use the word vyutpatti. In Sanskrit, it's a very important word. What is the vyutpatti of a word we will ask? Immediately, it goes. It means, go tell me what is the root. Tell me what is the pratipadikam. Everything, all that whole engine starts working after that. Good. Anything else? Mashaka is mosquito in Sanskrit. Okay. Mashaka. I see. Masha, masha. Oh, it seems in Coimbatore there is a place called Maska, Maskali Palayam near the airport where uh, right, the name suggests the city of mosquitoes. Oh, my. Okay. Like in Hyderabad, there is Zomal Guda. <laughs> oh, Zomal. Achha, achha. Zomal Guda. Correct. Very interesting. We have one in Bangalore also. Dumluru. Full of mosquitoes. Dumluru uh, means, Doma means mosquito. I see. In Chennai, there is one Puidi Wakam. In the Wakam? Puidi Wakam, oh. dust. <laughs> <laughs> The place is called Dust. <laughs> of course, now it's applies to all over Chennai, everywhere, Puiri only. Like that, yeah. Father. Father. Guruji, yeah. <laughs> so but Aangda, Tamil, we can say, if you do this, I will tell you, I will tell you, I will tell you. I think so. I think so. Adayam. Correct. Correct. Tamil is Sanskrit is not the What do I get out of this? Correct. What do I get out of this? What do I get? Da is to give. Ada is to get. Yeah. We have to tell this to what do you call the Sanadhanis. Ex -san, uh, people who are against Sanadhanis. <laughs> What word you will use when yeah. this time is removed? Very good. Anything else? Any other comments here? Two new messages. Questioner for the cyclostyle. What is that? There was a, there was a machine called Gestioner, a cyclostyling machine, previously before Xerox. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know over that. Kayala Sutua. Kayala, they used to rotate it with the handle. Right, right. So it's called what machine? Gessner machine, is it? Gessner. Gessner was the only people person who was ma making it. Oh, my. In big offices. We have to type in a special wax uh, paper. Correct, so correct. When you want more copies, we have to type it in special wax paper. Yeah, cyclostyling. Okay. Actually, it is Gestetner. Gestetner. Correct. Correct. I agree. Okay. Gestetner. Okay. Interesting. Anything else? Okay. Good. So, tomorrow we will have. Meet for and much to. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Dhanmantaraye Amrita Kalasha Hastaya Sarva Maya Vinashanaya Trailo Kyanathaya Shri Mahavishna Venamaha. Thank you.